We came to dance. We, we, remix. We came to dance. Prince and Elite Season 2, Episode 1 Review. Let's go get it to it. Yes. Let me tell y'all, I am so happy to be seeing my brothers, my gay brothers, my LGBT brothers on TV using lingo that we have created and styles and just everything. I love it. it. Gives me so much energy and so much, I just so much life. Let's go and get into it. So to give it a little wrap up, we got Jarrell and his new uh, mushroom hair hobbit head tease, okay? Jarrell got a new haircut, new do he got on, and da 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 and Chad, everybody like, I don't know what the hell to call it. Adrian, retarded ass, still <laughs> Adrian, still eating makeup powder and licking lipstick. I just, I just, <laughs> Adrian is a damn fool. I just cannot. Kareem interests his, um, Kareem is um doing his little thing with his um team uh, what is it what's the name of it the Blazing Elegance team and you know it, it might have some conflict with you know what he has going on with the Prince and Elise so we're gonna see about that um um we got Tim Tim is bad Tim has just been flawless and sickening as ever I just I just I love it I just love it um so Adrian is moving in with Tim and um. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're going to get some, like, some of them, like, playing being silly together. Maybe we'll get some of those couple of episodes. That'll be really, really cute. I'll be interested to see how they interact with each other. Um, so, let's, you know, let's start off from the beginning, honey. We got introduced back into the team, to the, uh, to the team. And, um, the first thing I'm noticing, we got, you know, complete changes and all that type of stuff. And we got folks introducing their boyfriends. Um, uh, everybody, I guess, let me see. Jarrell doesn't, Jarrell doesn't, well, he said he ain't got no boyfriend. Child, ain't no telling who he dating this week. Uh, who was it introduced to? Um, well, we got a chance to see Tim's boyfriend. Um, we got a chance to see Contrell's boyfriend. We got a chance to see, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Kareem's boyfriend. And the only thing about that is, I would say, is to be careful with that. You all are bigger than what you are, what you were last year. Y'all doing the damn thing. And I'm just... I'm a little nervous of seeing your boyfriends on TV so soon um, because it, it's just like it happened after season one. A lot of people might be looking at it crazy, too. And it's just like that makes me nervous a little bit. And I think about myself as far as if I, and you know, it's me dating now. And, you know, there are some people who don't and not saying any of their boyfriends are doing this, but it's kind of it, it, like when people watching and stuff like that. I just don't want you all to experience the same thing that Amaya Scott experienced when she brought her um, boyfriend on when she was doing. And then he built his own stuff. Like, it's kind of almost like he used him type of shit. So, I'm just, you know, kind of be, you know, watching with this shit, you know, because some everybody ain't good. And I'm not saying that y'all boyfriends are doing that. You know, I'm pretty sure y'all already got that together. But that's one new thing that I've noticed from the season, from the new season. Um... You know, they get ready, they're practicing for this cancer society, you know, um, extravagance, little event they're about to go to. And, you know, they get to the cancer society thing and they uniforms are looking really good and they were just out of sync. They just did not have it. Um, some people were off. Um, Tim's uniform fell, fell off and Adrian's uniform fell off. And then I just looked, when they showed the, the crowd, it looks as, wait, what? I don't know if they were laughing like, you know, like, oh my gosh, or what? But it just goes back to what Adrian was saying. Like, we need to transfer from being um, a novelty item to, you know, something real life that people respect. And it's kind of hard because I don't think people might not take this as serious. So, you all can keep on fighting for that. But at the same time, I do understand what Adrian is saying because are people inviting you to these events because they want a good laugh and it's something different? Um, or are they just really supporting and just looking out for the community? That's an interesting um, point. Um, but the performance was terrible. Contrera hated it. He really, really hated it. And seeing them in person, dancing in person, I know they can give better than that. And I just don't know what happened. So, you know, we're going to get into this. I think this season is going to be we're in a full hour this season. And I feel like they have a more stories to tell because they've grown so much. But it's like they're not... 
as close as they were from season one because all they had is each other. Now the whole world wants a piece of them. The whole world wants them to come to this perform. Like, I want you to here. I want you here and all that type of stuff. And it's kind of hard to do that and still remain, like, grounded. Um, um, one of the points I want to make is, and I had a question, and I don't want to offend anybody, but it's just like, in season two, I'm noticing that, you know, everybody, like, has changed a little bit. Like, Jarrell has the new hair stuff going on. He's wearing like heels and he's wearing like different style of outfits and things. And Kareem has different type of hair. Like it's just like, and I was going through Instagram and somebody had, you know, commented and, you know, made a comment and they were just like, you know, are y'all going to be um, transitioning, you know, as far as being transgender? And, you know, um, I looked and I was like, wow, that was rude as fuck. That was like disrespectful. But at the same time, I had to kind of break it down a little bit and I want to understand where they were coming from. Um, and, you know, a lot of people just probably, you know, wondering, like, why all of a sudden now do you want to wear these type of clothes? Why do you want to wear, you know, um, this type of hairstyle? Like, what is it? Have you forgot where you came from? But at the same time, I think that the Prince and Lees have become comfortable with themselves and, you know, they just want to be themselves. This is probably something they always want to do, but they have the more courage to do it now. And, you know, the coins, too. So, and I'm not saying that, you know, these certain clothes, I think we have to get away from thinking that these clothes are for this gender and these clothes are for that gender. Like, it's going to take us a while to get away from that. But I think in the next so-and-so years, like 100 years from now, I don't think we're going to be worried about stuff like that. I just don't think in the next 100 years, nobody's going to be giving a fuck about, you know, boys supposed to wear blue and girls supposed to wear pink. And I... I really wish I can see that type of world where we truly don't give a fuck. We keep saying we do care, we don't care, but we're not there yet. Um, so, um, what else was going on? Kareem ends up talking to his grandmother. You know, last season, Kareem had came out and said that he was HIV positive, which I think was amazing. Um, and things like that need to be said and talked about in the gay community. I'm wondering, you know, going forward... Um, is Kareem going to be comfortable, you know, speaking on some things and stuff that he might be going through? And he talks to his mother. We get to see he's talking to his grandmother about the situation. And his grandmother is just like, you didn't tell me. But Kareem probably did not feel comfortable telling her because that's a sensitive subject. And um, it was just amazing. And he said if he had to do it again, he, did, he doesn't feel bad from doing it the way he did. And there's not no telling what type of mindset and what he was going through at that time and he could not reach out to nobody and tell them so Kareem I, um very very um that was very very powerful for you I never did really get a chance fully to talk about it that um that season because y'all know I had a lot of stuff going on child I was sleeping on the park bench <laughs> oh uh <laughs> and what else is going on we get introduced to a new um uh, manager and his name is Montre. And let me tell y'all something. I'm glad because Suzanne was just the pits for me. She was just like Montre said. She was just old school. She just did not do a lot. So, and she was boring as hell. And I don't think she grasped like what they can be doing. So Montre knows that. And he just very quick. -wick. I had a chance to meet him too. Very quick. -wick. Very just responsive. And like, you're going to get this together. I love it because it's going to take somebody like Montre to get them together. Because baby Jarrell, like he was not here for it. Uh, Adrian was looking all over the side. And he was like, I, I pay attention. And he's like, hey, daddy. That shit was so fun. Adrian had me screaming. So, Contrell, I don't know if you talked to the team about that before you picked the manager. But, you know, Contrell just be making just moves and shit. Be like, look, I do a lot. And I can imagine that Contrell does do a lot because... I know a couple of people who are coaches and stuff, and they style the uniforms, and they do all the type of stuff. And some folks be thinking that coaches don't do nothing but bring their um, their teams and make it, like, money and stuff. But it's just, it's a lot of work when you're doing something like that. That's You're 24-7. Because I know with my brand, Justin J is 24-7. Um, I can be doing something at 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, I don't have no when I go into 9 to 5 o'clock. There there's only one person. And I have to make sure that my brand is doing what it's supposed to do. So um, they get to, you know, Montre is telling about this gig. He wants them to do a roller derby and all this type of stuff. And, you know, they go to the skate ring. They like, girl, let's give us a try. Because Contrell said his, his big boot ass ain't been on no skates in forever, okay? So Jarrell, um, um, not Jarrell. I just say Contrell, child, fucked it all up. 
Contrell, um, you know, he said he ain't been on there in forever, so he, you know, trying to get a little comfortable in the skates. Let me tell you something. I don't know how to skate to save my damn life. I really wish I did, but I, I do not like being in a position where I'm not in control, and I'm not in control when I'm on skates. I don't feel like I'm in control. I feel like anything can happen. I don't like falling on my ass. It's just not going to happen. Even though it's enough back there to keep me afloat and keep me good, I just don't want to fall on my ass. Um... The white man was looking at them crazy as hell like, bitch, who is these folks and why are they here? Jesus didn't die for this and I'm just screaming, honey, it was just so funny. Like, and then the kids to see the look, young kids help them and just teaching these children that like people are different and they just, they didn't look at them and like, what the hell? Like, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. So Kareem M gets a chance to talk to his boyfriend, Jay Sean. Um, about, you know, being a full-time director at his dance team, um, The Blazing Elegance. And he's like, I need you to be a full-time director. And Kareem just seems like he's just like, you asking for a lot. And, you know, I'm still on Prince and Lisa, so it's just, it's going to be hard. So he's like, you know, I just want you to, I just want you to, you know, think about that and all that type of stuff. So the team ends up having a meeting after, and Contrell is just like, Contrell is just going in. Contrell is just being, you know, like, he, you can tell the frustration in his face, like, girl, I'm just over it. Like, let's get this shit together. So, you know, he's talking to them and all the type of shit. And then Kareem just kind of breaks down. He was just like, you remember when I was going through all this type of stuff and all we had was with was each other. And it just seemed like things have changed. Um, it's It's a tough role on the way to success because... Sometimes you can be blinded by the crown, okay? That's what fucking Rihanna, no singing ass, no talent having ass said, you know, where she, somebody else wrote it for her. But sometimes you can be blinded by what you're doing. And me and that is like the royalties, the new money and the new clothes and all that type of stuff. And I kind of get where Kareem is coming from because he's like, we all we had with each other. And, like, and it's just like now we're not in unison like we used to be. Like we're not together and um you know everybody was like no we're not so you know i it, this season of prince and is going to be very interesting it's not going to be boring um it's going to be very fire um and it's not going to be like no doing doing boing um last season was good but i felt like that it was a little we didn't get a chance to learn anything about the prince and too much um little things but it seems like this we're going to get really really in depth and like uh, whoever's in charge of everything, y'all doing a phenomenal job. Stuff is looking amazing. Um, everything. I'm just excited about this, and I just can't wait to hear these, you know, unique individuals tell their stories. Um, I just, I just, I'm, I'm just ready for it. You know, I'm just ready for it. I'm just ready where Montre gonna take them and what he gonna do with them and what he gonna expose them to. And it's gonna be interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, what I'm expecting from this season of Prince Lee, I'm expecting. Like, I'm just expecting just just success. Success and just, you know, teaching. I feel like there's nothing wrong with um, anybody watching the show, um, heterosexual male, gay male, anybody. I think that especially gay black men, we need to support this show. We need to support this type of show because, you know, these are the only people on TV that's not assistants and not sit up here carrying folks bag and, you know, giving their jokes for free, giving their lingo and shit for free. So I'm... I'm going to watch it. You know, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to support them, do the best I can and support the show because I'm ready to see my own sisters and brothers, you know, do do something other than be assistants and fashion designers. So, you know, and somebody said, well, you know, I'm tired of, you know, the stereotypical gays being on TV. And it's just like, true enough. True enough. I understand what you're saying. Um, but these are things this beginning. This is what it is right now. So we got to work with what we got. And eventually, you know, when... Men, black gay men get comfortable enough to be on TV and be themselves, then maybe we'll do it. We see these folks on here doing what they're doing. Maybe we'll get be on TV. But a lot of us, you know, a lot of people that make that type of comment are not even completely out to their family. So I'm just be looking at them like, okay, girl, <laughs> like how you make the comment and you're not even all the way out. So we have to be comfortable with ourselves. And these people seem to be inter um, completely comfortable with what they're doing. They're on TV with wigs and shit on and, and, um, and jewelry. Like, they're doing the damn thing. So, big out to you. Um, Prince Lee's comes on every, I think it's Tuesday night, 9, 8 central. And I'll make sure I check it out next week. Y'all have a good afternoon. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces.